Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the tutorial um, Authentication with Vue.js and Auth0 um, This time we're going to be calling uh, our API okay, uh, Using the token that we got from the process of logging in So um, just to continue I'm going to follow the second part of the tutorial from the documentation of Auth0 uh, which is quite comprehensive. So to get started, um, as suggested, let's create an API. So to do that, head over to the Auth0 dashboard, um, select APIs, uh, click create an API, whatever name, identifier. Uh, you need to pass a unique identifier for your API. Usually it's the URL containing your unique domain. Uh, in my case, for demonstration purposes, I don't really care about it, so I'm just going to pass in localhost um, 3000 or 3001. I believe this is going to be my URL where I'm going to run it, okay? And signing algorithm is going to be basic public key cryptography RS256. Uh, uh, okay, it's going to be a uh, it's going to give us a public and a private key pair. Okay, it's basic uh, public key cryptography. Whatever you encrypt with one of the keys, uh, you can only decrypt with the other key. Okay, so let's hit create. This is going to be our API. Okay, and next let's define our uh, basic web server that is going to handle the requests. So I'm going to cd into my folder and I'm gonna create a folder called auth backend. Okay, I'm going to cd into my auth backend and I'm going to run npm in it to initialize a uh, basic uh, project. Okay, package name by default, auth backend, and everything um, by default. Okay, and let me open this in my um, IDE. Okay. <clears throat> and here we have just a package JSON. Um, Let's us install Express, our basic web server. Um, this tutorial contains npm run all um, because uh, it has both the front end and the back end in the same folder. And using that, you can run basically both of them at the same time. At the same time, uh, because I have the back end in a separate folder, I'm not going to install npm run all. So I just need Express, Express, JWT, and JWKS, uh, RSA. Let's wait until that installs. Meanwhile, we can just uh, copy the code for our simple web server and just create a file called server.js. Okay, I'm just going to paste everything in here. Make sure that you have your um, domain in the auth config and the audience uh, is the proper um, unique identifier that you've defined previously. For example, if I go to my quick start, uh, whatever uh, on the page of my custom API, okay, I just have here, just copy paste my audience from here just to make sure I don't have any typos. Okay. So this is a basic um, Express web server. Our authentication uh, configuration um, contains our domain. Uh, the audience is a bit ambiguous. Basically, it's the unique um, identifier of our API as defined uh, during the creation of the API. Okay, so we this uh, web server is going to handle a GET request um, on 
forward slash API forward slash external. Okay, so you can in production you can have uh, requests served on your subdomain, for example, API dot your domain slash external, or you can have just your domain name followed by forward slash API forward slash um, external. Okay, and before serving a resource, uh, we have this check JWT function, which is defined above. Uh, this check JWT function uh, is going to um, check the uh, request uh, for um, it's going to check the header of our request and it's going to look for the authorization header uh, and the token to be there within the authorization uh, header okay it's going to extract the token from the authorization header uh, and it's going to decrypt the signature of the JWT token okay so just to show you an example uh, I can go to JWT IO and again remind you of the structure of the JWT token. Okay, it's basically contain uh, it's structured in a header, payload and a signature, okay? So whenever um Auth0 creates that token, uh, it takes the header, payload, um basically applies the RS256 with the private key and uh gives us basically this nonsense which is um our token okay and whenever uh, our view application wants to uh, create a request to the server it passes alongside the request um, this token which is located in the authorization header okay and our application before serving um, the resource uh, it extracts that token and um, basically it decrypts the signature okay using the uh, key which is located at um, this uri basically okay so i can even access this uri to show you uh, what the key looks like so i think i have it but just to make sure i'll just do it again make sure it's correct so basically these are our public keys for security reason um, auth0 generates two pairs of rs256 keys so this is why we have here um, two keys uh, in here okay and that's basically it okay so let's make sure we have our domain in there the audience uh, server is listening on port 3001 um Let's define a script to be able to run our server. Let's call it server. And what it's going to do is going to do node and our server JS. Okay. Uh, proxy not needed since we're not using the npm run all and yeah, basically we just need a server uh, script in here and this should be it in terms of the backend uh, let's run this npm runs server okay our api is listening on port 3001 let's give it a check uh, api external okay and since this get request from the browser of course it doesn't have any special headers uh, we just got here a response that no authorization token was found okay this is the response that we get um, from the function okay check jwt all right so let's update our front-end application in order to be able to send valid um, requests to our api so let's take a look basically in the same way we need to specify our unique api id okay in our front end application so i'm just going to just copy and paste it from my back end make sure i have no typos so i'm switching to my front end uh, code so within my auth config i'm just going to add another attribute make sure it's 
voted appropriately since it's JSON. Okay, save. Okay. Next, we have to pass in this audience that we've just defined in the configuration to our Auth0 plugin. So let's do that. So we've plugged in our Auth0 plugin in main.js. So let's import our audience and specify it in here. Right, that should be it. And make sure we have uh, Axios installed, okay? Be able to perform this um, HTTP request, okay? And define um, the request in a such a way that we can specify the authorization header. So since the Axios library is quite extensible, it of course will allow us to uh, easily define this authorization header. Okay, so while it is installing, let's see what we need to do next. Basically, uh, we're going to create another view. It's going to be a simple view just to demonstrate uh, our request in action. Okay, so let's call it external API dot view. Okay, we're going to add our template. Okay, so using Axios, whenever we click on a button, we're going to do call this uh, call API function. Um, since uh, we are authenticated, um, and we're going to later protect this route um, so that we can access it only when we are authenticated. So at this point, we are sure that we are authenticated. And since we are, we can use this um, sort of plugin, this a dollar sign auth, uh, get token silently. And since we have the token, we can add our token to the headers, oops, to the headers uh, of our request. Okay, so the header is called authorization and the format of this header uh, has to be uh, fixed. Okay, so it uh, starts with the word bearer. Uh, okay, and space and followed by the token. Okay, so we have that in place. Okay, Axios is installed. Next, let's protect uh, and add our root, which goes to the external API. Uh, so we can do that in our router index.js. It's called in our case external API the component, right? We're going to use same auth guard, which is quite uh, standard. Okay, and let's add our link to our external API page. Let's add it into the app view. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of crashes in here, but maybe if I can restart my server, I'm going to get rid of them. Okay, so yeah, in my case, I have yarn, so I might have broken something. It's going to reinstall. Oops, it's yarn add. Okay. Right, so let's hope that this fixed uh, the dependency issues. Okay, and this point uh, we should be getting a working result. Okay, so let me remind that whenever we access this API just manually from the browser, we don't pass this authorization header. That's why the request fails. 
But if we go to our application, let me refresh it. Okay. So, um, okay, let me log in. Right, I accept. And now I should be able to see my profile and I should be able to go to the external API route. Okay, otherwise if I log out and try to go to the external API because it's protected by the root guard, I'm prompted to log in, which I'm doing, and I should be able to issue my call. And there's one little thing that I need to specify in the code, which I forgot, of course, uh, which is to locate my component and specify the correct uh, URL to as perform the request, of course. So since our server is available at uh, localhost 3001, that's the correct URL. Okay, so I'm going to save that uh, just in case refresh our app. Perform the call and I'm getting the um, basically the resource, okay, which the server is serving, uh, which is this JSON with the message, your access token was successfully validated. Okay, so this proves that um, everything worked fine. So this concludes um, this tutorial and thank you for staying with me. Yep, best of luck.